Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Throwback Thursday video on Supercars of London, and I'm back. I'm back after spending most of the night here at the haunted old people's homes, and I can verify that it is haunted. I hope you enjoyed the video. Twitter, give this place a blue tick. It is verified haunted. Today, I am with the baby blue Fiat 500. My car, I washed it this morning. I don't want to get it dirty because the roads are quite dirty and wet here, and I want it looking sparkling for the weekend. So I took the Fiat 500, and the whole idea uh, behind this is actually quite fitting as well. I'm with the Fiat 500 today because we're going to be throwing back to my first supercar. This episode, I want to talk about my feelings of uh, starting the series. It was probably the first uh, series on YouTube, Supercars of London, that I put a lot of time and effort into. And having the Baby Blue Fiat 500 here, um, it's not a supercar, 0.9 litre um, engine. I think it's got a motorbike engine in, so it's definitely not the 4.2 litre of the Audi R8. It's freezing here, um, but I want to get through this video outside because inside, it's got flowers and everything. So yes, having the Fiat 500 here reminds me of when I had my Vauxhall Astra and didn't own a supercar. This is thrown back to around 13 or 14 months ago, the start of my first supercar. Check out the trailer and uh, remember, this is the first time that I ever pointed the camera on myself, so I was definitely nervous, scared of what you were all going to think of me. I think it's the first of its kind. I don't think there's anyone, anyone that's ever documented or um, blogged about buying their first supercar. It's vital that my first supercar sounds how a supercar should sound. So put it this way, I'm not buying a Porsche. <laughs> Supercars of London was started when I was 15, 16, before I had a driving license. And all um, my ideas were to run around with the video camera and chase after all of the supercars that are driving around in central London and go on a huge supercar hunt. To begin with, I got in contact with Premier Velocity, one of the largest UK supercar hiring companies. And the director there was more than happy to accommodate my um, idea. It was a real collaboration with Premier Velocity and Supercars of London to put me in the passenger seat of loads of different supercars so that I could test them out from a passenger perspective. I had James next to me who was a very, very capable driver who could talk to me about what it was like to drive the cars and then I was also able to give you the perspective of what it was like to see the cars on the road and all of those three bits combined helped me pick my first supercar. <laughs> supercar wasn't actually the first idea I had when I came to Premier Velocity with this idea to create a video series. Supercars of London um, was wanting to go more commercial, more mainstream in terms of cars and we needed access to supercars to do reviews, to talk about them in a more open way and give the viewer a perspective of the various supercars, try and review them. But we were going down the Top Gear route, we were trying to make them funny, we were trying to, well we were trying too hard I think, the best way of describing it was we were trying too hard I was um, trying to write a script which doesn't work on YouTube ever I've never had a script since and my first supercar was really all ablib and um, there was loads and loads of stuff that went on on my first supercar that was fantastic completely out of the blue such as the SLS versus the Prius you're not, you're, you're not you're, buying a supercar then you're not buying a supercar you're not buying a supercar get a Prius get a Prius <laughs> do you know what? every time I drive past a Prius I always down there's a Prius here Seriously, I'm gonna Where's my video camera? Greenpeace. 
So back in October 2013, I met up with Premier Velocity after the supercar season had died down in central London. And the idea was to create a series on YouTube that people could enjoy that was about supercars, um, but it was also relevant and had a journey, which is where my first supercar came about. I still didn't had no idea how I was going to be able to afford a supercar, but I decided that my first supercar was the perfect adventure for me to go on, but also relay back to YouTube and, and hopefully get as many of you guys as possible into my journey, into my adventures of trying to find the perfect my first supercar. It wasn't until episode three or episode four when we did the SLS, we did the GTR, um, that I realized that it was actually possible that I was gonna buy a supercar at the end of it. I couldn't have picked a better person to do it with. James was a fantastic person on camera and a really, really good driver. He scared me a couple of times, uh, but overall, it was an amazing experience to do it with James and do it with Premier Velocity. My first supercar ran throughout October and I think ended around March time. We did um, a semi-finals, we did an overall review, we did a Christmas special. I even went in a Porsche Boxster. Now, the trailer that you would have seen in the beginning of this video shows that I was never going to buy a Porsche. I don't like the sound and I didn't understand why people put bought Porsches. However, since going in the Porsche Boxster S, which I have to admit was probably the most fun I'd had in any of the Premier Velocity fleet, and then going in the Army Trix Porsche Cayman recently, they are a fantastic car. I understand why people buy them and I appreciate the build quality and the overall performance of the car. However, I still probably won't own one. And my first supercar was just the perfect series to set supercars of London up. I think I had around 40,000 subscribers when I started my first supercar. I was so nervous having filmed supercars for five years and not having to worry about what people thought of me, having to see my face, having to listen to me, blah, 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 blah. And then I turned the camera on myself and I made the YouTube channel about me and my journey of buying a first supercar. You don't understand how nervous I was, how my palms were sweating. It's five minutes towards the upload time, the first ever video where people was gonna see my face. It was a daunting experience knowing that um, a couple of hundred, maybe even thousands of people uh, were going to see what I looked like. And now um, I'm freely talking to the camera with no script whatsoever and feel that I've gone on a massive journey, a personal journey. The My First Supercar thing was the start of me putting myself on camera and um, allowing you all in to my supercar adventures and you joining my journey on what I've been up to. And then when I bought my first supercar, obviously um, made it Team Iron Man, went on Gumball 3000, enjoyed summer, met so many fantastic people um, and going to be continuing to do so. The reason that I'm throwing back to my first supercar was obviously I did a vlog as well talking about my second supercar. We're still miles away. We're probably about halfway between my first supercar and my second supercar. We're about here filming at the moment. So we're 12 12 months um, past my first supercar and we've probably got 10 to 12 months to go um, before my second supercar. But it's an interesting topic, so if you've got any questions about this video, about my first supercar, about my R8, whatever it is, put them in the comment box because tomorrow I'm going to be filming the question and answer video for Living With A Supercar, the episode that is going to be going live on Saturday. Over the weekend I've got a pretty jam-packed schedule. On the Saturday I'm going to be car spotting in London, I might have a photo shoot as well with GT Spirit, which would be a fantastic opportunity to get my car out onto the GT Spirit website. And then on the Sunday, I'm gonna be going for a little drive. I can't say too much more, but I'm really looking forward to um, showing off the blue wrap and obviously the Army Trix exhaust and finding as many tunnels as possible. And then as it's starting to rain, um, one last thing, next Monday, that Ferrari competition I mentioned last Thursday ends. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning a $40,000 Ferrari, then definitely, definitely check out that video or follow me on Twitter or Instagram or wherever all of the information is. You have to text super to um, a number that I can't remember. Text costs £1.50, but I promise you £1.50 well spent if you win that Ferrari because you're either driving around in a, an, an Italian V8 supercar or you're going to sell it and you're going to have the best Christmas ever. So um, there you go. That is Throwback Thursday talking about the start of my first supercar, where it all began. My feelings were I was absolutely petrified on putting myself on camera. But since then, um, hopefully you have, have all seen me grow as a person on camera and I hopefully you have enjoyed the supercar journey as well that comes with it. So thanks for watching. Make sure that you subscribe. There's going to be a whole ton of videos coming over December. I really cannot wait to get filming, get editing and put it out for you because Christmas and New Year on Supercars of London is going to be epic. Cheers guys, take care and I'll see you soon.